I have a question. Yeah, yeah. Um, at some churches, they have like a dress code, right? You know, it's on Sunday you get in your 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 nice dress shirt and your nice slacks, and you show up to church. In VR churches, they're like an avatar dress code. Like, would someone <laughs> kind of like not wearing yeah. pants like this not be allowed? Or, yeah. or not wearing pants yeah. right now in real life? So, how long yeah. have you been doing uh, baptisms in VR? Uh, we did our first one, let's see, probably a year ago. Actually, one of the g- gals that did get baptized, she has like, like a condition where she can't even leave the home. So um, we were able to baptize her. And when she was coming out of the water, she was just bawling and crying because she never thought she'd have that opportunity. You know, because she's stuck at home. And I can't imagine, like, I'm not homebound. Um, and I can't even imagine what that would be like. One gal who goes to VR church, she comes because she's in a wheelchair, so she puts on her Oculus to come to VR church. Anyway, she tried to go to the physical world, and one church was like, you're in a wheelchair because you don't have enough faith. And I was like, if that was uttered by someone in like on earth, like someone actually thought those words and spoke it, and to you, like you're sitting there and saying that in a wheelchair, like I, it was just mind blowing. Like I just wouldn't have ever even thought that. Um, another guy was like, he was a heroin addict. He just got out of a uh, halfway house and he went to a local church where the half, halfway house was and they kicked him out. I mean, he wasn't like um, causing problems. He just you know, looked like a recovering addict. And so, um, and I'm like, man, I think Jesus would be freaking out because the, the church is supposed to be a place of healing and hope and a, a spiritual hospital, if you will. And, you know, the guy with the heroin addict, he's still struggling with some things. But hey, it doesn't matter, man. You just come hang out. We're just a small little VR church doing our thing. And a couple um, newspapers wrote about it. And it caused a little bit of a stir, you know, because it's it was the first of its kind. Nobody's ever done it before. But uh, so now there's this like wherever I go, that seems to be a fundamental conversation I have with people, um, particularly pastors and like church leaders. Um, they get really wigged out at the idea, but um, I don't know, we celebrate it. So do you think it's like parents that are like, you know, when their kids start playing video games, and they're like, you're going to rot your brain. Do you think it's like they're like, <laughs> yeah. they still they just have to get in touch with yeah. it? Yeah, I think that's a big part of it. There was a like a 16 year old that was coming to our church and then his mom like freaked out and like forbade him to come like she didn't know why she was just had this reaction to it you know technology virtual reality and it's for some people it's such an unknown that i think it freaks them out and i think they question whether you can actually have relationships in vr and i think that's the crux of their argument or their confusion and i'm like man some of my closest friends are in vr your relationships can be more authentic because there's a sense of anonymity that we have and with that anonymity comes authenticity. We can just be real authentic with each other. There's no judgment, you know, race, color, you know, whatever way, you know, we're just, we're just human beings talking to each other. We've spirit to spirit, you know, uh, mind to mind, just having interactions. Even in the physical world, your body is just a shell of like your spirit, right? I mean, your spirit is your person. Like if you were, I don't mean to be cr- crude, but if you were like hor- horribly disfigured or I don't know, whatever, you would still be you. Um, so the physical shell, which is important, and I, and I give him credence to that, is less important than, the, you know, what's inside the spirit and the attitude and, um, you know, the love we have for each other. So my family's religious. And so I was doing the church thing, you know, every week going to church and stuff. And, um, and then I did, I did go to a religious institution to study to be a pastor. Um, when I came out of that, I did not want to be a pastor because um, it, it just got real... Um, I'm just giving you the short version, very political, very arrogant. When you read the scripture, Jesus is very inclusive and inviting. And then everyone's invited to the party. And religious school was like, no, um, we're a very exclusive thing. And, you know, only certain people are allowed. Depends how you walk and talk and, you know, all that stuff. So, and then kind of got the desire for pastor again, because I met, I connected with a church in Pennsylvania where the lead pastor was like a normal guy. I just started getting involved in that ministry. And he started being like a mentor and a coach to me. It was a long journey of just getting back into it and being a part of their just volunteering and then interning and then eventually being on staff as a pastor and got ordained as a minister. You know, we're a bunch of gamers in our in our house, you know, Fortnite, Overwatch, all that stuff. And so social VR started coming out and I was like, oh man, it'd be cool to try to have like a faith experience in here. So one Sunday I just was like, hey, let's do it. And you know, only five people came, but um, the first visitor was an atheist from Denmark. And he was like, man, I don't believe in God, but I'm really curious about what this faith stuff is all about. And which was incredible because I've never, you know, in all my religious training and 
and the church I was part of never had an atheist like walk through the door. It was like May of 2017 where I was like, oh, wait a minute. I think we're starting a church here like in, in VR. And so our brain shifted into, okay, we're not church planners in the physical world. We're church planners in virtual reality. So that's the, the birth of VR church as it is today. So I don't believe in much, um, but I've been kind of, you know, exploring my faith a little bit. Um, like I wouldn't mm. say that I that I'm Christian, but maybe just like a little Christ curious, mm -hmm. and like yeah. I'm just kind of exploring, just exploring faith options and seeing what's no, what can be in beautiful. store. I think it's beautiful, personally. I wish many more people were kind of in your exploratory phase. Um, I think that's a valuable place to be. Like this one uh, atheist from Great Britain came in and he was just a brilliant dude and I loved it because, you know, you get caught in these, not caught, but just, you just live in these cognitive biases. And so he was able just to just talk about things that I've never heard of before. And I was like, dude, you're like, I'm down here and you're way up here, but I loved it. And, um, and it just sharpens me, it expands me. Um, we definitely had different difference of opinions, but at the end of the day, we were, we had a relationship that I thought um, was very beautiful. and. And still some of my favorite conversations is is this people that are completely opposed to me because it just it just helps both of us to grow your uh your son just messaged me on twitter <laughs> oh yeah my kids no it's funny because they mentioned your name i don't know how your name came up i was like oh look somebody wants to do baptism sire more and they were like they all like did a small gasp is, do, are you like you have a big youtube following right or is that um yeah for the record yeah, i'm that's... bigger than him but i mean like i mean i'm not trying to like make it a thing <laughs> like that you know for now so, like, <laughs> oh okay or no <laughs> dude well anyway so they were like they were they're amazed by that so yeah they, they've watched your videos before and oh uh, small world funny. i got some dad cool points for knowing some popular oh, yeah. youtubers so, you, know. you can wear as many socks with sandals as you want now you got that <laughs> blank check going that's right that's right we just want to welcome everyone and um thanks for being part of this this spiritual moment and it really is a spiritual moment i think maybe some people think of it as maybe a religious ritual and that's fine too but um this is something that has spiritual significance to it um there's a couple of things happening drumsy when when we're baptized um you know one of the things is that we are talking about being immersed in god's love when you go underwater that symbolizes your spiritual cells are soaking in divine love and new life and forgiveness and um you know release of the old and so i think that's a beautiful uh, symbolic thing that 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 represents when you are lowered into the water that symbolizes that you're dying to the old drums the old attitudes and the old things that have held you back and maybe there's guilt and regret and and failure and that stuff is dying and um, it's going to be buried there because god wants you to experience new life and that's what that represents when you come out of the water his new life so just as jesus was dead and buried and rose again to life that's what we're going to symbolize for you today don't be discouraged if mistakes or failures come their way that's just a part of life that's just a part of being human uh, but baptism is a declaration that you're going to walk in a new path in a new direction and have a new attitude and a new mindset um, and that's a very beautiful thing drumsy let's come over here uh, maybe where there's a little more space and kind of back up and um, right here and so, um, Ramsey, in just a second, I'm going to ask you to load yourself into the water, and you're just going to stay there for a minute. So, uh, Drumsy, if you don't mind lowering yourself into the water. So, Drumsy, you're fully immersed in the water, and you can stay there uh, for a minute. And right now, what this is happening is you're immersing yourself in divine love. God's love is all around you, and he has a, a goal and a destiny for your life. And so that love that's inside your spirit um, God wants you to know that you are um, a child of God and that all your mistakes and all your failures and all your regrets, all those things, um, those things are in the past. And so you're being immersed in divine love and you're also declaring to everyone that the old self is dying, the old attitudes are dying, and the old drumsy, those things are now in the past. And so drumsy, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So Drumsy, rise up again into new <laughs> life to signify new life for your spiritual walk. And that, my friends, is your baptism. And 
I think we should all celebrate drums. Let's awesome. give them a Yay! 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 Good job! So I got, a, I got <laughs> blood rushing to my head when I got up. How do you feel? I feel... I feel like I'm out of breath. I feel like... Like I just had an experience, even though I was just crouching for like 10, 15, you know, like, what was that, like 30 seconds. I was crouching for 30 seconds. It feels like, feels like it was much longer. Wow. Yeah. How did I look, Simmer? I mean, you look pretty submerged. I mean, from my angle. Oh, and the water's gone. Oh, there goes the water. SpongeBob! SpongeBob! <laughs>